Hello and welcome to the fourth video of Pultrusion Machine series. One thing I forgot to mention in previous video is that you can basically run this firmware on an older 8-bit 3D printer board as well as newer 32-bit boards. So we have one lying around, you don't need to buy anything as both stepper motor drivers and MOSFETs are already on these boards. However, you will need to tweak firmware a little so that it's compatible with 32-bit microcontrollers. You can ask me directly if you need help. I would be interested in testing this on some real board as I do not have one to spare. Before we begin to compile the firmware, you will need to install Platform.io. This process depends on your operating system and has detailed instructions so I will not show it here how to do it. Instead, there is a link in the description below with both written official guide and some YouTube video movie to guide you through the whole process. Now let's dive into firmware compilation. First thing you will need to do is to download or clone the GitHub repository and open it up in Visual Studio Code or editor of your choice. But since Visual Studio Code is free and has a great platform IO support, I will show it how to do it in VS Code. Once you open up a project, install Platform.io extension by clicking the extension button. Then search for Platform.io and click install button followed by restarting your editor. You should be good to go at this point. Navigate to src slash main cpp and you will see a bunch of defines on the top of the file. Here is your configuration section where you can change any pins according to your connections such as LCD pins motor control pins, heater pin. Below that there are also two things you may want to tweak, which is the default motor speed and RT0, which is your divider resistor next to thermistor. Now that you have all variables set up, you will see the icon on the left side that opens up the platform IO homepage with a selection of tasks. Simply click the build button Connect your board to the PC using the USB cable and then click Upload. If something goes wrong, go back to your files, open platformio.ini and set appropriate port for your Arduino board uses. May not necessarily be COM5. And try uploading it again. This can be checked on a PO home screen under the Devices button once you plug in your Arduino board to your computer USB. And this is it. Your board should be already flashed and ready to go. Next step is tuning your Pultrusion machine and there are a couple of simple steps to take. Very first thing you'll need to set up is bearing cutter. Bearings should be pretty tight against each other but not too tight, so it's easy to pull the plastic just by light force using your hands. You may need to put some washers underneath the bearing if they are barely touching at each other. Overall this is a really simple yet necessary step. I am assuming you will be using typical bottles and not the ones with very thick walls as for those you may need to change the entire height of the bottle cutter. Second thing to tune in is a combination of temperature and pulling speed. Start with the default speed 2300 that was set in the firmware and stepper driver set to 1 16th step which is all switches connected to 5 volts. Then gradually increase the speed as it reaches around 4000. If your machine can successfully pull the entire bottle at that speed, go back to 2300 and set micro stepping to 1 8 step, which is just MS1 and MS2 connected to 5 volts. Repeat this process until you are certain that filament are still within acceptable diameter and bottle does not snap halfway through. When it comes to temperature, I have found that the machine is really tolerant and operates from 140 to 220 degrees Celsius. Any less is causing some high friction and any higher causes some slight plastic melting and nasty odor. Temperature also affects the speed, so technically the higher you go, the faster you should be able to pull the bottle. But this also changes the output diameter of filament. My golden point was speed set to 1400, temperature to 200 degrees Celsius and micro stepping set to 1 8 step. 
After you pull entire bottle, check with digital caliper diameter in various places to ensure it's going to be printable. From my experience, you will have hard time printing anything above 1.8 mm and below 1.6 mm. So adjust the speed temperature if diameter is not within. I have also made some contraption device made with a hull sensor, magnet and some bearings to check how uniform filament really is. While it's absolutely not super accurate, it's accurate enough to quickly measure uniformity filament coming out of machine. I was quite surprised how good it was. Here is the graph I took and besides the very start and the end, the tolerance was within 0.05 mm. The first part is thicker because it's pulled by hand and the very end gets thinner as the bottle reaches its the end. You should simply cut these parts off. So like I said in previous videos, this will be mostly trial and error and a couple of wasted bottles to get this up and running. And the last thing is to set up your slicer settings. There are four things you should change in order to print successfully. First and most important is the extrusion multiplier under your filament settings. I am using 1.3 to make up for filament hollow core. If you do not change it, your prints will be severely under extruded. Second most important settings is cooling. Simply turn it off. PET does not like cooling even more than PET G. The only thing I have left is fun for bridges to 30%. Keep in mind that I have, that I have uh, two 501 fans, so depending on your setup you may need more. You may also want to play with layer time goal, as with small details PET will begin to crystallize if you start stacking layers fast. I do not care if that happens, so I have disabled this feature. When PET crystallizes, it begins to turn cloudy, but also gains a lot of strength in the process. Third setting is limiting speed and volumetric flow rate to about two thirds of your hot end capabilities. I have decreased this even further down to 40 mm per second and flow to 4 cubic millimeters per second. That said, I have Volcano hot heat block, so it may differ for you. Start with my settings and gradually decrease it if you have problems or increase it if your plane still looks fine. And the last thing is printing temperatures. I had best results while using 280 degrees Celsius for all layers and 75 degrees for bed. Pet should be printable up from 260 but you may need to limit speeds even more. Also depending on your bed surface, you may need to adjust that as well. I am printing on a textured pay without any adhesives. If you have glass or smooth pay bed, you may, you may need to use some glue sticks or you can damage the bed in the process. Optionally, I suggest to tune in retractions as you may find that settings which works for pet G does not necessarily work for pure pet. You may need to increase it a little. Slicer is not the end of adjustment you should make. I've learned the hard way that the pressure advance in clipper or linear advance in marlin can ruin prints and it's often best to just disable it. I am unsure why this happens, maybe it has something to do with its viscosity. If you can explain it, I'll be happy to hear in comments down below. Aside from that, there aren't many issues with printing at different layer heights, line widths and so on. Besides the problem I mentioned earlier, it behaves like a normal PET G filament that is cut to smaller pieces. Which is the last annoyance with printing it. So far there has been two options to handle that. One of them is filament wielding, which is rather annoying as it requires to sand off the excess material and takes quite some time. And the other is to simply use the filament detector very close to your extruder. This setup has been working flawlessly for me and once in an hour I have to go to the printer, pull the small remnant from the print head and put new filament in, then just resume the print. I will also test multi-material units in the future 
to check if those could be a solution. But as for now, this is all for this video. Hope you enjoyed it or learned something in the process. Would love to hear feedback in comments down below.